just had an exam. I went to eat with Fahid. I went to you, the one who's filming. Flip the camera. You can show see. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so we two were eating and we were having a conversation and out of the nothing, this guy comes along. And he tells us the following. <laughs> so, I, uh, I walked here from Oslo. Maybe it took me about four and a half months. And I haven't touched money or I haven't made a transaction or carried money or bought anything with finance. And I, I tried to embark on this experiment to see if it's possible to, to repay my way to society without using money. Is there a different way to give back? And also, am I really heavily socially programmed to believe that I need more money than I, than I need? How much do I really need to be comfortable with myself? So just to be clear, when was the last time you actually touched money? Well, somebody went like this the other day with money. <laughs> <laughs> but the last thing that I bought was a toothbrush in Oslo. Uh, and my teeth are still in good shape. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got... I, I swap things. I swap my thoughts and ideas for whatever I need. He asked us for food for, for us to buy uh, something to eat. But it didn't matter what, he didn't care. Just he wasn't allowed to touch the money. Yeah. Because he believes that, that people should be social enough to to give back to each other. Is that? Yeah. I think he, uh, I think what I approached you with was my book on the internet. Yeah. I've written a collection of writings that I've written while I've, whilst I've been walking. I haven't owned a computer since I've been gone, and Just I've been trying to rely on my own ability to make people happy or make people sad or whatever. So, so in, instead of swapping money, you swap your Poetry, your book, your my poetry, your my book, my company, you know, your company. Your company. I mean, okay, okay, like this. My company. Oh, your, your, my your, presence. So yeah, right presence, now, yeah. right now, say, see, for example, if, say, for example, you were lonely and I was lonely, yeah. and we meet each other and we talk. Yeah. We both win. That's great. So it's yeah. not even a swap. Yeah. It's just a. Yeah. It's a win. It's, yeah, it's just a construction. Yeah. yeah. It's a building. <laughs> yeah. So the the the. The rules that I operated on when I just went out of the house, or I was going to try to, to see how far I could just walk without taking transport, without touching cash, without drinking, smoking, or trying to limit all the vices without owning things. And also, I wished to be, to, to make this all work, I realized that I have some legal problems, so I'd say I was my own boss. And, and my, whatever I considered ethical would override anything, any legal law. So if I want to camp, if I want to camp in a field, legal or not, if I'm not harming anyone, then I, I would do it and I have done it. So it led me to a position uh, in Amsterdam where I thought, I, was, I had passports and I thought, oh, <coughs> do I really need this or is it the same as cash? I mean, there's plenty of people that cross borders without passports, and I don't have a problem with that. Pretty bit of people coming from Africa to Europe. So if I just burned my passports, what would happen? And there's a pretty cheesy video on YouTube about that, so you can check it out, but it's not really worth it that much. What's the name of the video? Sorry? What's the name of the video? I think if you just Google Ibby, I-B-B-Y burns passports. <laughs> okay. But, um, I had a little bit of a sit-out time after that. I went to a uh, luxury hotel, taken away in a blue car that resembled a limousine, yeah. called the Gelder Police Station Jail. And I went there for three days before they identified me, which they didn't identify me the day they released me. I actually wanted to go into the detention centres. Because I thought we instead of getting out. Yeah, I thought if I think uh, I think more than professors and uh, migrants who've gone on massive journeys have more to teach me, considering I'm into cultural adventure. So I would have just sort of seen it as a university opportunity in the in a detention centre. However, they released me illegally. They released yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they broke the law. They <laughs> broke the law. Yeah. Actually, yeah. How long? How long did they uh, help? Oh, after you sure. held there? Ah, uh, three days. But I had to say the treatment was good, the treatments were good, the police were good, we, we had fun and a laugh. You talked to the people? I took, yeah, I mean, you, you know, look, you, get, you get breaks, you get like, you're in your cell and then it's say every four or five hours and you go and you get your cigarette break and you can talk to the other prisoners or you can, you know, you can talk to the police that are holding you to try and they slip you meal and through the mouth stuff. So, so I know some sort of, of all those things, all those conversations you've had in the past four months, you must have met like tons of people. Yeah. Can you like just 
tell us a few things that, that you experienced and learned that were like for you like like life lessons or like important things to realize. Like on your trip, you learn a lot of things on your trip. Yeah, basically. Sure. Yeah. I like share yeah. a few okay, okay. things with us. Okay, what do you experience? I think the most the most uh, where I've advanced the most is I've dropped a lot of prejudices. And I think by not carrying money, I've been forced to talk to more people. And, uh, and uh, people are willing to help. So other people are like, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is fair enough. Yeah. I mean, my view is that, 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 uh, that this side of the world is overdeveloped and we need to develop other things. We need to start to think a little bit more. There's a lot of materials around to share. But anyway. So out of the people that have, that have been willing to talk and help and, and, and uh, have experienced uh, we've shared things, you can't tell where they come from. You can't tell whether they're atheists, religious, Christian, Muslims. You just can't tell. Everybody's different. You can't pocket them into a certain rich or poor, you know. Certain people have been more willing and other people have been a little bit uh, more reserved. But what I have found is the happier people have been the ones that are more open to socialization. So I think I have a theory that the more objects we want to keep for ourselves, the less happier we are. Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously it depends on the individual, but I want to try to find a threshold of what I need. And then I believe if I have more than it, I'll be less happy. So I think there's a bit kind of... When, if you would like have a scale for happy, how happy are you right now? <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've been ecstatically happy for the last four months because I'm doing something new and exciting and adventure. I think I've probably been happier when I've just been at that point where I was in love, you know, when I, yeah. uh, I've just met a new woman. And it's I'm, a different type of happy. Yeah! It's <laughs> 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 That's what it is, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, um, can you also, you already told it to me, but yeah. you're where were you born and where did you, which country okay. have you been and so forth? Okay. Well, this is off the camera now, I don't have passports. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't officially recognize countries. So, I'll talk about cities. Okay, cities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I was born in the city of Melbourne. And I lived in Melbourne until I, I was raised there. Melbourne, that's in uh, Mexico, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, just in between the, the border of Mexico and Guatemala. Right? So, <laughs> All right. so I was there for 20 years, and uh, my, my, my dad's from Kenya. My mum's from Italy, and we had I had an upbringing where both cultures were quite heavy in my in my um, in my upbringing. Different ideologies. Yeah. I think um, Italian culture is more it's more family oriented. There's neither there's not one that's better or worse, and and probably African culture is more community oriented. So there's a there's a, a the family is more extended. You know, someone on the street is kind of family as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not good or bad. I mean, it's just the way it is. Um, and then I was raised, so I was raised in Australia for 20 years and travelled extensively for 10 years through rich and poor countries. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're planning on points. I can, I can there's a, uh, a point in my travel that kind of changed me. That really changed me was I met a, I met a child who was starving, starving to death, and I was. Uh, Gouging myself with, with, with a hamburger and I lived pretty minimal. In which city was this? This was in Mexico, yeah. Mexico. I, lived, I lived in the south in a state called Chapas. I lived quite minimally. I washed my own clothes. There's no washing machine, you know. I ate just a little bit. I cooked for myself. I didn't have many clothes. But I, I still had, because I was from a, a, a western country, you know, from Australia, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, had, I had, at any point I had a financial advantage. If I really wanted, I could borrow a thousand euros. And it got really hairy, you know, and that, that's the salary for a year. You can survive yeah. if you, you know. And then, then when I saw this kid and I was starving, and I gave him a bit of food, and he just ate a bit and went to sleep on the side of the road. And he said, thanks to me, and I'm thinking, it shouldn't be like this, because, yeah. I'm, because I'm living so lavishly, because I have so many luxuries. He's starving, so I should be thanking him. Yeah. We should just be taking it. And uh, then I, I kind of realized that this, the financial structure of the world or finances is false. And I didn't really believe that any amount of money really belonged to anyone. You know, you can, 
And uh, just just to put something in perspective, yeah. when you're talking about money, yeah. like you said, it's easily for you to to borrow a thousand euros. In the in the past four months that you have been traveling, how you have no idea how much money you've used. You've probably used uh, a hundred of what I use in a month, maybe. I don't know. Okay, yeah. 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 How much someone's paid for me? I look at it like this. Okay, that's a good question. And we were talking about resources. But some days, 300 people read the book, my book. And I eat about four times a day. So maybe maybe four times a day, if I, on a, on a, on a real heavy day, maybe 30 euros I spend. Yeah. And if you have 300 people reading my book, it's 10 euro cents that I sell each book for on the net. And plus, <laughs> I don't print it out, so there's no environmental damage. Yeah. So that's the way I look. Uh, that's the way that I look at it, if you want to look at it in an economic sense. That's well, what I wanted to, to show is that you, yeah. you only use like 10 euros a day, but your level of happiness and way of life is a thousand times higher than the average person who uses a thousand euros a month. Thanks, man, you support me. That's, 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 that's what I wanted to show. That's what I wanted to show. That's what I wanted to show. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> that is it. So I suppose uh, we'll, we'll get in contact if you want to uh, read more, I'll, I'll leave my details in the book. But your website was... Yeah, be, you can Google IBBY Walks, or you can YouTube Kimmy Jones Passport, or, you can, uh, or, or, or maybe you can connect the uh, uh, address and web address to this interview, and then we can... And then you can show everyone who is. anyone who's interested. Uh, you can check it out. Yeah, it's so awesome. Thanks, brother. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.